This video is one of a series numbered 1 to 8, which cover the basic concepts of the primary mathematics curriculum. There are two sets of supporting materials. One is the Maths Mesh Guide, a summary of research knowledge and pedagogical knowledge. The second is the Numeracy for All booklet, showing in detail how to make and use the resources mentioned here. Okay, when teaching children very early on with maths and introducing them to number, one of the first things that you'll do is simple counting, where they're counting concrete materials. So this is what we call the, the concrete stage, if you like, where they're physically counting out some sort of object. Then we can move on from there to the pictorial stage, where there are pictures, they're not actually concrete objects, but for instance, the dots, so they can count the dots to get the numbers. And then from there, we make the link on to the actual number symbol, which is abstract. So I've got a few ideas now for how you can link between the concrete, the pictorial and the abstract. OK, so a simple game um, to practice the idea of concrete, pictorial and abstract is uh, this game. You have small game boards. They're made from milk packets. Um, so this would be for one player or for maybe a team of two or three and then another team here. And what the children do is they take two dice, which are the zero to five dice, they throw them, they add the numbers, so two and two is four. They then have to count out four counters, so one, two, three, four. Then they find the corresponding four dots, so here, one, two, three, four, and then they find the number four on the cork and they place it on like this. And you Take it in turns, and then the winner is the first one to complete the whole board. OK, another resource for teaching the link between the pictorial counting numbers and the actual number symbols, the abstract numbers, um, is this one. Made from a piece of scrap cardboard and some nice little jar tops, which are great because they're nice and big. So the numbers can be written quite largely. You can use these lids by themselves. Um, you can use them for ordering. So you can see I've already started to order the numbers, but it goes wrong here. So after 12, we want 13, and then 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. And you'll notice that I've got a blank one here. Well, you could use this for zero, but there isn't a zero in this game. But as a top tip for teachers, when you're making resources like this, it's quite easy for things to go missing. So there's nothing worse than, oh dear, we're missing number seven. So if you have a spare blank one in the kit, then it's quite easy to just write the missing number on it. So that's a little tip. OK, so we can use this numbers for different things. So you could ask the children, what's the number after four? Uh, what's the number before 16? What's two numbers after 10? And so on. Or we can use them with board. Now, the idea of the board is that we've got different um, amounts within the circles. So you could pay, play this with pairs, with a partner. And I could ask my partner, OK, I want you to find this number. So they count the dots, three. They find the correct bottle top with number three on it and they place it on there. Then they ask me, OK, I want you to find this one. So I count one, two, three, four, five. I find number five and place it on there. And we keep taking it in turns and we see um, how quickly we can fill the board. And you can repeat it again and see if you can be quicker or you can race against other teams if you want to make it competitive. OK, you can also use this board for number bonds to 20. So a useful additional resource is our little bottle top counting stick, which has got 20 bottle tops on it. So this can be used um, on its own for counting, um, but you can also use it for number bonds to 20. So for instance, if I said, right, I've got five, one, two, three, four, five, uh, five and what makes 20? So if you count these, then you'll find that there's 15 um, on this one. So five and 15 make 20. Um, so within this game, because we're going to 20, you could ask somebody to find a number, so pick a number and they count the dots. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And instead of finding number seven and placing number seven on it, as we did with the matching game, 
I want you to find the counter that's got the number one to 20. Now they may know it, they may be able to work it out and just straight away find 13. 13 and seven makes 20. But if they don't, then they can use this to help them. So I've got seven. So you count out the seven, three, four, five, six, seven. So this will be the number that I make to get to 20. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So there we go. I know that I'm gonna place 13 on my number seven. Okay. More detail about the resources in this video and others can be found in this booklet, Numeracy for All, Resources for Teaching Mathematics, a guide for teachers and trainers on how to make and use low cost or no cost teaching and learning aids to encourage active and playful learning for maths in the classroom. Teach some maths. These videos are from a partnership between VSO International and the MESH Initiative. Both organisations have a commitment to share knowledge freely around the world for the benefit of teachers and learners. Yeah.